big faith to create a bright future. And when you think about faith, when I think about faith, the first thing that comes to my mind is I think about people talking about faith. And most people make the mistake of thinking that talking about faith, singing about faith, preaching about faith, hearing sermons about faith, going to a church that has faith in the name is the same as having faith. But none of those things equate to having faith. What is faith? Well, faith really is expectation. And expectation really is the human being's greatest superpower. And if you don't learn how to use it, the cultural, hypnotic, societal mechanism will use your superpower against you. Here's what it says in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And you already know the verse. You already know it. You've heard it. You've said it a thousand times. Here's what it says. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, what's the first word in that verse? Now. Now is such a critical component to having faith. Why? Because faith is something you can only have. See, we can conceptualize faith without being in a now. We can talk about faith without experiencing a now. We can, we can sing about faith without being in a now. It, the easiest time to have faith is when you don't need faith. Can I get a witness? The hardest time to have faith is when it's absolutely essential that you have faith. And that's why the first word is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Why? Because faith is something you can only have when you allow yourself to enter into a now that unlocks the level to a new unlocks the door to a new level. So you need now faith to get to a new level, wow. right? But most people, when we come to the now that requires that we have faith, instead of going through the now that requires that we have faith, we turn around and go back to the circle of sameness, AKA the comfort zone. And we stay miserably comfortable for the rest of our lives. Every time, do you understand every time you have an opportunity to change your life, what's going to happen is you're going to have this thing that happens inside of you and your freak out mechanism is going to go on full force and all the alarm, no, no, don't do it. Oh my goodness, this is so crazy. I'm so uncomfortable. What if? And then we start doing the what ifs, right? The what if games. We start asking ourselves questions like, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, that's a, not a good question. Can you imagine David? picking up the stones out of the brook and running towards Goliath. What if I miss? What if I miss? What if I miss? That's terrible. You have to allow yourself to enter a now that requires that you have faith. And see, what happens is that's easy for us to know, accept, understand, say amen to, get excited about, as long as I'm not facing the now. What kind of faith? Now faith. Now faith is the kind of faith that Noah had when he worked on an ark on a boat in the desert. People who build big old boats that'll hold elephants and rhinoceros and hippopotami, they don't build them in the desert, especially in a time when it had never rained. You gotta understand something. Noah is 480 years old. He has never seen one raindrop because before the flood, water came up from, dew came up from the ground and it watered the earth. So Noah had never seen a raindrop. God said, Noah, I want you, I want your sons, I want your sons' wives, I want your wife, I want y'all to work on this ark and build this ark. It's going to be to save your family, and it's going to save seven of every clean beast, two of every unclean beast. I want you to work on it until it's done. Okay, where do you want me to build it? Just go over there and build it in the desert. In the desert? How am I going to get it to the water? Don't worry about getting it to the water. I'm going to bring the water to you. It's going to rain. He said, okay. He went home and told his family, hey, we're going to build an ark. We're going to go out there and build a boat in the desert. See, see, here's what happens. We're reading this stuff in the Bible and we forget these were real people just like us who had real conversations like us and real feelings like us and real anticipations and anxieties like us. And he said to his wife and his kids, we're going to go build a boat in the desert. And his wife said, well, how are we going to get it to the water? I said, God's going to make it rain. His wife said, what's rain? It's, how do you explain rain when you've never seen it? I mean, can you imagine God, Noah going back to God, God, uh, what's rain? Water's going to fall out the sky. He goes back to tell his wife, uh, water's going to fall out the sky. Do you understand how hard this had to be for him to believe? But he believed it to his core. He believed it. His wife believed it. His sons believed it. His sons' wives believed it. How much did they believe? They believed on it enough to work on a boat in the desert for 120 years while everybody around them made fun of them. 
Do you have that kind of now faith? Do you have the kind of now faith that will cause you to work on a project that nobody believes will work but you? That's now faith. Now faith is the kind of faith that David had when Saul, who the scripture says, was head and shoulders above everybody else in Israel. Here's what that means. The second tallest person in Israel only came up to Saul's shoulders. And everybody else was shorter than that. And we got Goliath. He's 10 feet tall, got six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. And the scripture said that his spearhead weighed 16 pounds. That ain't the spear. That's just the spearhead. That's a bowling ball with a point. And I know everybody in Israel, they think, do you know what happens to people when Goliath throws his spear and it hits him in the chest? Limbs go everywhere. Yeah, it just explodes everything. And they are doing what any sane human being would do. They are hiding. But David had faith. What kind of faith? Now faith. Because he remembered the word of the Lord. What was the word? The word that God gave Abram back in Genesis chapter 12. I'll bless those. He said, if you'll, if you'll enter this covenant with me, I'm going to bless you in ways you can't bless yourself. I'm going to make you something you can't make yourself. I'm going to give you something you can't get yourself. I'm going to take the source of your shame and make it the source of your fame. I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse those that curse you. Do you realize when David saw Goliath, heard Goliath cursing God, he knew Goliath couldn't win. That's why he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine. What's that mean? Who is this Philistine that's not even in covenant with my God that he should curse the armies of the living God? And he said, he said, don't worry, I'll fight him. <laughs> I love David. David's like, David's like what's it, why are you hiding? No, I, I'll fight him. Tell the king, uh, uh, but before I do, what's going to happen to the man that fights this Philistine, that kills this Philistine? David negotiated his compensation three times. Go read the story. See, see here's the problem. You act like, like ch churchianity makes us act all spiritified, like, like there's something wrong with getting paid for the work we do. David said, I want to know what I'm going to get when I kill this giant. I'm getting ready to enter, I'm getting ready to go into the danger zone. David wasn't worried about the danger zone, but he said, he said you know what, since everybody else is worried about the danger zone, let me negotiate a really good contract. Well, the king's going to let him marry his daughter. And he's going to enrich him with great riches, and his family will be free from taxes in Israel. Just give me the third one. I don't need the other ones. I, no more taxes. <laughs> okay. And David ran toward the giant that everybody else ran from. Why? Because David had now faith. And see, we don't even have enough now faith to call a prospect. Really? We don't even have enough now faith to put an offer on the internet. But what if they don't like it? Who cares? Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So the first thing we want to see about faith is this. Faith is foundational. Faith is foundational. Now faith. Now faith is the substance. Sub. Sub is under. It's something under me that I'm standing on. Now faith is the substance. Sub means under. Stance means to stand upon. So faith is something under me that I'm standing on. Now faith is where I stand. Do you understand that every action any of us ever take in the present, it's because of an expectation we have about the future. And every action we don't take in the present is because of an expectation we have about the future. Now, here's the thing you gotta understand about future expectations. Anything I tell myself about a future outcome, I made it up. Well, if I make this call, they're going to buy from me. I made that up. If I make this call, they're never going to buy from me. I made that up. I'm going to write this book. It's going to be a bestseller. I made that up. I bought, I'm going to write the, but if I write this book, nobody's going to want to buy it. I made that up. Anything I tell myself about a future outcome, I'm gonna, but if I start a business, my business will be like one of the 80% of businesses that fail in the first three years. I made that up. If I start a business, my business is going to succeed wildly and I'll be richer than Elon Musk. I made that up. Do you understand Every action we take in the present is about some fairy tale that we're telling ourselves in the future unless we're telling ourselves what God already told us. Then it's already done. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not, I'm not speaking something into existence. 
What I'm speaking is I'm speaking faith into a space in my life where doubt used to exist. How am I doing that? By telling myself the same thing that God has already told me. But Myron, you can speak things into existence. No, you can't, because if you could speak something into existence, you would have already spoken something different into existence than what you got in existence right now. (laughs) What you can do is you can speak faith into a space in your life that will give you the ability to take an action that you could not take in doubt. It's foundational. It gives you the ability to stand and take action on things that other people are afraid of. Oh, oh, but, but, uh, oh, oh, but, um, uh, uh, China and Russia and, 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 and the American dollars no longer being backed by Saudi. Oh, no, no, no. God wrote this story before the people ever existed. And here's what he, here's what he told me to do. Here's what he told me to do. Pray about everything, worry about nothing. I'm good. I'm straight. <laughs> I ain't worried about none of it. Um, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act and live and work as if everything's going to be fine. And I'm going to prepare just in case it ain't. I'm going to be ready. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Because at the end of the day, in the end of the, at the end of the day, I am here at the service of the king. And so faith is foundational. Now faith is the substance. Sub means under. Stance means to stand upon of things. Now here's the interesting thing about the word things. The word things means things. Oh, now faith, what kind of things? All kinds of things. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Here's a, here's a really interesting thing about the word, the word things. Uh, Proverbs 25, 2 says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. Here's the interesting thing about that. The word thing and the word matter in the Hebrew are the same word. The word honor and the word glory in the Hebrew are the same word. Okay, what does that mean? Here's what it means. God and humans get glory from playing hide and seek with God. What does that mean? It's the honor, it's the glory of God. That means the significance, the weight, the splendor of God. That's what it means. It's the splendor of God to conceal or hide a thing. A thing. It is the honor. That word honor, same exact word that was translated as glory in the other part of the verse. It's the, it's the honor of kings to search out a matter. That word matter is the exact same word as the word thing. What's the Hebrew word? The word, Hebrew word is the word debar. Now, why is, that, why is that important? We know the word debar even if we don't know we know the word debar. You know where we know it from? Abarakadabar. What does debar mean? Debar means to speak. To speak. So here's what it says. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing in his word. It's the honor of kings to search out a thing in his word. What what does Deuteronomy 17 tell us? It tells us the job of the king is to study the word of God and write out the scriptures all day. That's his job. So that he can have the mind of God. That's the job of the king. People say, well, Myron, why do you teach business based on biblical principles? Because it's your best chance to win. God has the best content. He knows how everything works. He set the whole thing up. I have an advantage when I operate from his perspective. (laughs) How many of y'all tracking? Wave at me, my people. And so what we have to do is we have to get to the place in our lives where we understand the foundational things. So now faith is the substance of things. What things? The things that God has spoken. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not any thing made that was made. Oh, God is the only person who baraz, who creates out of nothing, the only one who creates ex nihilo out of nothing in the entire Bible. The Bible does not talk about anybody else creating out of nothing. Now, we get to create out of something, but what we're creating is we're creating out of something. We're creating using the resources that God has already put in the earth. God created the resources and then created stuff with the resources. He, he does the whole thing. We do the second part. Now, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, the word hope is not a wish. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. No, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't kind of hope. It's talking about. It's talking about an expectation. It's talking about a well-founded, well-grounded expectation of the future. Like when I turn on the light, I fully expect the lights to come on. When I wake up in the morning, I expect the sun to eventually come up, right? When I start my car, when I push that little button in my car, I expect the car to start. In other words, I'm believing in an outcome for a reason. I'm not just wishing it to be so. So now faith, what kind of faith? Now faith is where I stand, the substance of things hoped for. I stand on the things I expect. So 
I'm gonna I'm 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 tap you onto some like serious fire right now. This is, the, this is the ultimate game. Of all the things I've ever done in my life and of all the things I ever do, the most important thing I do to win in business and life is to only expect outcomes I desire, period. I have learned to discipline myself, not to allow myself to expect to give any energy at all to outcomes I don't desire. <laughs> So when I'm working on something, that's why, that's why like our business is able to triple and quadruple this year. Well, like more than 10 X, like I've literally working on a project right now. We're working on a project right now. That'll be a nine figure project, hundred million, $250 million project right now. And I'm working on it. Like, well, of course it's going to work. What else could it do? I'm working on it. You say, well, why, why, but why, why do you say it like that? I say it like that because that's how I'm supposed to say it. That's how I'm supposed to believe it. I'm not supposed to drive my, the car, the vehicle of my life down the road with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. All I'm going to do is wear out the brakes, run out of gas, and wear out the engine. And that's what most people do. Their, their whole life experience is, I'm trying, what does try mean? One foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. Take your foot off the brake and accelerate into the curves of life. Now faith is where I stand on the things I expect while I prove Prove the evidence, evidence. Oh, evidence, proof. I prove the things I cannot see. Do you understand? How do you prove something you can't see? You work on it until you see it. <laughs> do you understand that every book you've ever picked up in your life existed in somebody's imagination before it existed on, that, on those pages? Do you understand every car you've ever driven existed in somebody's imagination before you ever sat your little hiney down in that car? Did you know, understand that every house you've ever lived in existed in somebody's mind? It was invisible before it came, became visible. And somebody expected it so much that they, they all, no, no holes barred, just Katie bar the door, get out of my way, we're going to go make this thing happen. And now you have a place to live. And somehow we think we're going to win by being iffy. <laughs> faith is foundational. Now faith is where I stand on the things. Faith is not just foundational. Faith is fundamental. It's basic. How basic? You don't get any more basic than things. It's fundamental. Hope for. Faith is futuristic. Now, I understand that anything I'm going to do, I'm going to do by the grace of God. It's Everything in my life is Lord willing, right? I understand that everything I have in my life is a gift. I woke up this morning. There are people who went to bed last night and did not wake up this morning. That's a gift. I have something to praise God about already. I'm alive. I woke up alive. I opened my eyes. They could see. I'm like, what do you know? They can see. Now, I know how to look, but I don't, know how to, I don't know how to make my eyes see. I know how to make them look but I don't know how to make them see. Hallelujah, I can see. My ears can hear. I, don't, I know how to listen, but I don't, know how to, I don't know how to make my ears hear. I know how to make myself listen, but I don't know how to make myself hear. It's a gift. And I got up and did my morning routine-ishness, did my cold plunge and my Epsom salt bath and all of my other stuff that I do. And I got out of bed, my legs will hold me. I got in my car and I remembered how to get to work. And do you understand it's all a gift? That's why, like, it doesn't matter what you accomplish. It doesn't matter how much money you make, how many degrees you have, how smart you are, how pretty you are. It's all a gift. It's all a gift. You're, oh, you're, my family's awesome. It's a gift. It's all a gift. You got friends. It's a gift. You got a business that makes money. It's a gift. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. I, got, I, 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 don't, I, don't, have a single, I don't have a single solitary thing in my life. Not one single solitary thing in my life do I have to be proud of. Because it's all a gift, and it didn't have to be this good. And when we understand that, and we can go through life with an attitude of gratitude, and have enough faith to realize that everything is a gift, oh, it'll, it'll, it's, it's a whole new level, my peeps. A whole new level. And so, faith is foundational. Now faith is where I stand on the things I expect, while I prove the things I cannot see. Well, do you understand 
that your future is so much brighter when you learn how. So how do I activate this faith? If you read Hebrews chapter 11, it's going to tell you a whole bunch of stories about a whole bunch of people, about Noah and about Moses and about Barak and about Enoch and about all of these people who did all of these things in faith. In fact, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, that is by faith, the elders obtained a good report because the only way anybody ever obtains a good reputation is by faith. The people that we know of, the the reason we know, the people who are noteworthy, they're noteworthy because they believed in something enough to do something that everybody else would know about. Are y'all tracking? And so, so then it says, by faith we understand, not by understanding we have faith. So if you're one of those people who thinks you'll believe as soon as you understand, you have it backwards. You will understand as soon as you believe. Faith creates understanding. Understanding does not create faith. By faith, we understand that the worlds, plural, were made by the word of God, were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen, that's one world, were not made of things which do appear. That's the other world. So the, here's, when, you be, when you begin to wrap your mind around this one, this is juicy. The invisible realm is reality, and the physical realm is nothing more than the manifestation of that reality. God made man before he formed man's body and then breathed the man that he made into the body that he formed for the man. Are y'all tracking? So this ain't me. This is just the manifestation of me. Me, I'm all up in here. All up in here. And see, what people don't realize is that invisibility is more real than physicality. Heaven is more real than earth, just like God is more real than I am. People say, I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about the invisible world, I'm talking about the real world. You got it confused, baby. The invisible world is the real world. The physical world could not exist without the real world. I'm looking at these people on Zoom right now. They're looking at me on Zoom right now or on YouTube. Guess what? I, I got some, I got some breaking, breaking news, breaking news. You are not in my computer and I am not in yours. It's just a manifestation. And just like me seeing these people's faces on that Zoom screen and y'all seeing my face on this YouTube screen, just like that, It's not me being in your computer. This body is not me. It's just a manifestation of me. It's a way for me to experience the physical realm and a way for you to experience me and me to experience you. Otherwise, this is not the real part. This is just the part that shows up. Now faith is substance of things hoped for. So one, one of the things we have to do is we have to tap into our understanding and only give energy to outcomes we desire and learn how when we are in the moment. By the way, You don't know if you have faith until you face the now that requires the faith. So the next time you face the now that requires the faith, take faith, take inventory of how you feel. Take inventory of what you're focused on in that moment. Are are y'all tracking? Because in that moment, here's what you have to do. This 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 is the part that we can do something about. Y'all ready? This is what we have to do. In that moment, we must replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome we don't desire with the joyful anticipation of the outcome we do desire. In the moment, in the moment when you got fired from your job and you're worried about how you're gonna tell your spouse, you have to in that moment replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome you don't desire. How am I going to pay for my car note? How am I going to pay for my utilities? How am I going to pay for my, how am I going to pay for food? You got to replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome you don't desire with the joyful anticipation of the outcome you do desire. How many of y'all tracking? And, and, and by the way, it's easy to do that when you don't need to do that. But when you have to have, like when you absolutely must, that's when it's the hardest. And that's when you've got to do it. How do I know that, by the way, this is not me being a pseudo-psychologist. This is, this is, what I'm talking about right now is in the Bible. In fact, I'll read it to you. That way you'll know I ain't just making it up. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 tells about all these people in faith. Here's the interesting thing about, thing about God. I love the fact that God doesn't try to hide any of the facts. Because one of the things it says is in, in, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, it says, and I'm... Um, blah, 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 blah. It says these, I don't, I don't see where it's at, and I don't read fast enough to find it. It says these all died in faith. Some not having received the promises. So some people died in faith, and they received the promises. They saw the benefits of having faith. Some people died in faith, not having seen the benefits of the faith that they even had. They were sewed up in animal skins and sheep skins and goat skins, and they were thrown through the lion. 
What kind of God would let me do that? The kind of God that, ain't your, that you didn't manufacture in your God manufacturing plant. See, here's what happens. When we say, what kind of God would, we have now elevated ourselves above God. And we are worshiping the God of our own mind, not the God of the Bible. The kind of God that's bigger than one you could create. That's the kind. Okay. So, I love the fact that it tells us that it tells us about the people who died in faith, but also the people who uh, died not having received the promise. Oh, here it is. The, the, I was looking at the wrong chapter. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39. And these all having attained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided a better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. In other words, they're, they're not complete without us. They died not having received the promise. We died, it, when the promise they're talking about is the promise of the Messiah. We died having received it, but... Their faith is not complete without our faith, and our faith is not complete without their faith. Now it's going to refer back to them again in chapter 12, verse 1. Here's what it says. Wherefore, by the way, whenever we see wherefore in the Bible, wherefore is always referring to before. Wherefore, therefore, refers to before. So because of all the things he just said in chapter 11, which wasn't separated into chapters when it was written, by the way, wherefore, seeing we are... Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That is not talking about people who have died and gone to heaven or sitting in the heavenly grandstands cheering us on. I don't know what you're doing when you get to heaven, but I ain't going to be watching earth. <laughs> get them, tiger. No, that's not me. Not me. Right? It's not talking about people witnessing us. It's talking about their testimony of having faith witnessing to us about the benefits of having faith. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. That word weight means burden. So let's put down the burdens. The only reason you're burdened is because you're carrying it around. Put it down. Put it down. Why you, why you, can you imagine me walking in here with some dumbbells in my hand talking about my arms are tired? <laughs> Bro, put them down. Lay aside every weight, and then it says, and the sin, the sin that does so easily beset us. What's the sin? The sin that does so easily beset us, if, if the whole thing's talking about faith up to this point, what's the sin that does so easily beset us? Doubt. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin of doubt, which does so easily beset or stop us, because that's what stops us is doubt. We think it's facts. It's not facts. It's, it's doubt. What is doubt? Doubt is belief in the outcomes I don't desire. See, faith and doubt are both belief. Faith is belief in the outcome I desire. Doubt is belief in the outcome I don't desire. Faith is belief in the promise of the Father. Doubt is belief in the promise of the enemy. Both are belief. Faith is not belief and doubt is the absence of belief. Doubt is misplaced belief. She says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with patience. Patience is persistent, consistent endurance. The race that is set before us. My race ain't your race. Your race ain't my race. I ain't racing against you. You ain't racing against me. I'm racing against me. You racing against you. Let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. But how do I do it? This is, the, this is one of my favorite verses in scripture. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I love the fact that it says author and finisher. He finished it when he started it. My faith was already done when it got started. The author and finisher of our faith. Who? I want you to notice what it says. Who for the joy that was set where? Before him. When he set the joy before him, what did it give him the ability to do? He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. What do we see in that? We see that even Jesus, while he was going through the trial of his experience on earth, while he was going through the worst his worst experience in all of eternity, he's hanging there on the cross with sinners for sin, sin as sin for us. When he's hanging there, here's what it says he did. He set the joy before him. He wasn't focused on what he was going through in the moment. He was focused on what he would be going through once he got through what he was going through in the moment. Who for the joy that was set before him, what did he do? He endured. When you learn how to replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome you don't desire with the joyful anticipation of the outcome you do desire, you will be able to endure. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. What is the joy that was set before him? He sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. And the difference is, he was already set down on the right hand of the throne of God. He knew what that felt like. But now, when he sat on the right hand of the throne of God, guess, guess what? He's not there by himself. We are seated with him in heavenly places according to Ephesians chapter 1. That was the joy that was set before him which brings, us, brings the whole thing full circle and helps us understand, once again, it's God's signature on the purpose of our existence. What does that mean? It's a picture. 
I'm created in the image of God. God is creative. So I was created to create. So creation, that's the first pillar of my purpose. Man, uh, it's, not, it's not good for man to be alone. How did God know it wasn't good for man to be alone? Because man's made in the image of God, and it wasn't good for God to be alone. That's why he made man, so he could have somebody to fellowship with. Somebody who wasn't him that was like him that could appreciate all this beautiful stuff he had created. So creation, connection. God created creatures and creation to express his creativity. He created man for connection. Man severed the connection by listening to the enemy instead of listening to God. And what did God do? God made a sacrifice. He sacrificed his son. That's contribution. That's the purpose of life. Creation, connection, contribution. Christ now, he created everything. He connected. He came down to live with us. And then what happened? He died on the cross for us. That's the contribution. It's full circle. Creation, connection, contribution. When you have the kind of faith that gives you the ability to replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome you don't desire with the joyful anticipation of the outcome you do desire, since you're making up these stories about the future anyway, you might as well make up stories that empower you instead of making up stories that disempower you. And you will be able to do things that will cause other people who don't have that discipline to scratch their heads and well, I wonder how they did that. They learn how in real time to change the movie they were watching and replace the anxious apprehension of the outcome they don't desire with the joyful anticipation of the outcome they do desire. If you will learn how to have that kind of big faith, your future is going to be so bright you're going to have to sleep with sunglasses on. If you want to watch another video on this subject, similar subject, go watch the video that we did on No Limits. It'll bless your life. Stay blessed by the best. In the meantime, in between time, do all the youtube stuff, like, comment, share, and whatever the other stuff is. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Thank <laughs> you.